This is a multimedia remote to control your PC. For less than $8 of parts, you get customized macro and hotkey support, all with a pretty rugged remote you can buy for under $3. This was a solution I built to address multi-track audio and subtitle content for the VLC media player. With this, I can start a video file, skip the intro, switch the audio track, and turn on subtitles all via the remote. This is just easier to do using a remote than one-handing a keyboard while on the couch watching this video content. If you're new to building your own USB HID device, the Arduino Pro Micro and its modern replacement, the RP2040 Pro Micro, can be programmed as a USB input device, exactly like a mouse or keyboard, but with more. One can assign either a single keyboard stroke the Silver Star story. Use this card to dis or a combination of presses, like a macro to put your PC to sleep. The microcontroller lets us map the key presses to context-based buttons on any infrared remote with the use of an IR receiver. This means we can assign a generic television media remote to maybe all YouTube web player shortcuts, we can expand on that further. We can add more profiles for different applications and a screen to assist what profile is active and provide the user with feedback for each button press. And then maybe some LEDs to add that razzle dazzle and a case to complete the package. Yes, there's other solutions like this and this, but why buy it when you can build it for three times the cost? Oh wait, we can actually build this cheaper than buying it. If you want to try this out, the bare minimum parts needed is your microcontroller of choice and an infrared receiver. This minimal effort assembly will get it done, but if you want a more refined solution, this PCB simplifies wiring everything together. To build what's shown here, this is the full parts list. This will also require a 128 by 64 pixel OLED and some M3 hardware for the case. Assembly requires solder paste and reflowing it with an oven or hot plate. I made some choices for the OLED and IR receiver mounts, basically to allow for some fit adjustment. They do mount in a weird way, and this layout was both the software testing platform and final hardware revision before I figured out what the enclosure looked like. I want the LEDs to give the case like a status glow, so this fake drive bay needs a translucent window, and hot glue is the answer here. I'm using the top of my hot plate, which is supposedly ceramic coated. It's gonna be the bottom half non-stick surface for providing the mold for the hot glue. Some thread forming screws mount the PCB into the back side of the case. And this bracket with a threaded insert makes the front shell attached to the back of the case. The overall design ended up being a Mac because I like the design language of it. And that really means my first attempt was uninspired and directionless. So once everything's together, put the USB cable into the microcontroller and the other end goes into your PC to program. The hard part here is decoding the remote. I picked this Roku remote because it's apparently the most commonly lost and replaceable remote on AliExpress. And at the price point, it's a pretty media friendly button layout. So the selection here just kind of works. The sample code that I've provided has this remote fully decoded. So if you use any Roku remote similar, even this one that's I think 12 years old, you're pretty much plug and play with the example code I provide. But if you wanna use something different, like a different brand remote, you're gonna to have to go through the decoding process. This is all built around the IR remote library shown here. You can use the simple receiver sketch to figure out what protocol your remote uses and then identify each button combo one at a time. These Roku remotes use the NEC protocol. So eventually press every button and document the hex code assigned to that remote function. I suggest making a handy diagram to do this. I'm gonna number the buttons zero through 20 from just top to bottom, and this is gonna be needed to organize ourselves for the lookup table later. Just to recap here, if you're using your own remote, I've uploaded the simple IR receiver sketch to the Arduino, 
and I'm pressing every button on my remote in a specific order, and I'm looking for the command hex code respective to that button. I'm putting this all in a chart when I assign my macros for that specific button. The button's contextual label and respective infrared code are the lookup index for the codes table. A corresponding state, so zero when it's idle and one when we detect a button press, is the last link to get the whole macro working in the code. I don't want this remote to just serve one application. I want to assign four applications or profiles to this one remote. That means I want four different applications and their respective media focus hotkeys and shortcuts all contained here. I'm gonna use the power button to cycle through these profiles and set the OLED and LEDs to let me know that I've switched between modes. Case statements gets this done to check for the current mode. And when I press a button on the remote, the logic flow is to check what profile we're in and then match the remote button with the lookup table. That matches to the case statement and we execute whatever macro is there. To make the program sketch a little bit easier to navigate, I'm using tabs in the Arduino IDE to split to the core sketch and the media profiles for readability and organization. So if you wanna grab this code from the Git repo, make sure you preserve this file structure. That means drop all these .ino files into a folder. Here's the main program. The rest of the profiles will open with this. I also provide a graphic template to organize all the hotkeys and shortcuts so it's easier to translate this into keyboard commands if you're going to do a significant rewrite of the code. Because of the multi-profiles, the OLED is a necessary feature. It aids the user by displaying all the remote's functions when pressed to build muscle memory. Letting you know what button does what was done only for the first profile. And this becomes the first problem we have with the Arduino Pro Micro or the 32U4 chip, its memory limitations. You'll need at least a kilobyte to write the screen buffer for the OLED, so storing all this character information for all 20 remote buttons times four profiles quickly reaches the memory limit of this microcontroller. If you really need to support this accessibility-like feature, I'd recommend using the RP2040 Pro Micro since it offers significantly more memory to do something like this. The pinout is basically the same, except for these two top pins, which kind of hang over the board. So this is my application. These are the remote functions I've settled on over the last four months of dogfooding this device. It's mainly a video player for YouTube and VLC with some convenient Windows level functions to tab between active windows and another to put the PC to sleep. Probably the most universal use is a slideshow remote that works as well as it is cheap. The RetroPie profile isn't fully fleshed out yet, but it's really meant to be a companion for playing emulators on your PC couch style. Think sort of like a quick start. Launch the emulator, load the ROM, and go full screen. Then go to your controller. Because of certain games I was playing at the time, I also added a snap window left and right so you can display the game walkthrough on screen to fully realize the multimedia conveniences here. All the code, 3D print files, and PCB design files are open source. Check the video description for links and details. I hope this project gets you closer to a better PC multimedia setup on the cheap, and thank you for watching.